It's a quarter to ten right now, and I was expecting to be sitting in 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 a movie theater right now, waiting to watch RoboCop, the remake, at a ten o'clock screening. But unfortunately, apparently, there's only midnight screenings available in IMAX and in regular. So. I uh, wake up at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning for my other job and not gonna, you know, be till, be out till 2 a.m. and then drive home and get to bed by 3 a.m. to be up by 6. Not not worth it on the weekday. But I got the next best thing besides watching Robocop. I have the official Mockbuster. Android Cop. Um, yeah, it, so yeah, I was, I did buy this and I was hoping to do a, um, see a 10 p.m. show. Um, I was hoping to come home, watch this, see a 10 p.m. show, or see, I was basically hoping to see a 10 p.m. show of Robocop, make some notes, record record some thoughts, um, and then watch this during Snowmageddon, uh, the sequel, and then do a block versus mock. But as I don't plan to go to the movie theater tomorrow as the snow is supposed to begin right after I got out of work and supposed to continue on until we all die a horrible frozen death um probably will not be seeing Robocop until next week probably like Tuesday at the earliest so yeah I wound up watching Android Cop so this is a uh, silence version of the Robocop uh, concept it's from Mark Mark Atkins, who is uh, one of Asylum's go-to directors of photography, who actually has directed um, a pair of my favorite Asylum pictures, uh, Battle of Los Angeles and Merlin War of the Dragons, which kind of is a win already because of Jurgen Prock now in it, and I love Prock now. But, so, what is Android Cub? Android Cub is basically a um, police officer played by Michael Jai White, gets after a apparent screw up in terms of a seizure of a suspect gets assigned with an android for a partner and they go back into this contained quarantine zone in 2050 Los Angeles 2040 sorry 2045 Los Angeles uh, that apparently is somewhat irradiated to extract uh, a suspect and obviously stuff goes down stuff isn't exactly what it seems corrupt cops and officials, yada, 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 yada. Lots of action. And how the story, story is, it is what it is, and I've sort of come to expect in a lot of Asylum pictures as of late a sort of Twilight Zone-esque kind of vibe about certain things. So, you know, there wasn't really any surprises in, in here with the story or whatever. What was very surprising uh, was how quick it came, how quick it, it came and left. Um, and how stylish this film actually was. This is probably one of the most dynamically shot Asylum pictures that I've seen. Um, and what I mean by that is there is definitely, you can really say this film, a lot of this film is shot on a steady cam. it's shot on Dolly, it's shot on, on Crane. It's, you know, it's, a, you know, there's a lot of cameras moving around characters. There's a lot of, moving back and forth a lot of zooms in and out, zooms in and out and i've always professed to be a huge fan of a moving camera uh so that for me makes a scene where it could just be two characters talking rather than setting up like a tripod and expounding to the uh to the camera or to each other it's just pretty boring it's still frame i mean what i have here it's not dynamic but it's now i should be doing this this makes it look really poor but what is more dynamic is a moving camera. It makes you feel more involved, makes it feel more alive and energetic. Um, so that's what this film had. It did have a lot of energy, and uh, the, in an early gunfight in this really kind of squalid apartment, I definitely got the feeling that uh, director Mark Atkins, who's also the director of photography on the film, so he's pulling double duty, probably watched a bit of Dread um, and maybe some of the Raid Redemption before... Uh, shooting this thing because there's some really interesting uses of slow motion where you have you know you know, we have sparks of bullets hit up impacting guys slowly moving around the corner shooting slow motion you know 
So, and that's something I generally don't see a lot. I haven't seen a lot of like low budget films in terms of that real heavy use of slow motion. Um, there is uh, quite a few practice in in terms of the practice in terms of the action sequences. There are, there is definitely CGI in it. It's a silent film that's going to be CGI, uh, and there are a few practical explosions and there are some practical fires which are nice, uh, but all the muzzle flashes and such are uh, generated in a um, in CG. Um, but so the action, there's a lot of gunplay in here, but also because of Michael Jai White being involved, there's definitely a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat, and he is allowed to showcase a little bit of his uh, martial arts. And he, he, guy's really, guy's very well talented, and um, unlike a lot of, I think this really does speak to the confidence in the filmmakers as well as uh, White's um, abilities that instead of a lot, a lot of low budget. Um, Fist fights are shot very close, very quickly cut, and or slightly. You can tell they're a little stilted. They're trying to make up for it. Uh, here, the fights have a little bit of stilt to one or two of them, but otherwise they're very fluid. They're shot in medium, in medium to wide. There's uh, a bit of a slower cutting to it, so uh, there is more time to sort of showcase that. Yeah, we have a really talented guy doing the fights here so we want to show this off uh so which was a which is a very very smart choice it's always really depressing when you have someone who's very talented and they sort of cover up that talent by tr by tricky camera work or tricky editing and there's not much of that here when it comes to that so that that was a lot of fun so i would say the action really did deliver um you know i've, I've always had a bit of a problem with low budget movies where they're just Set piece, five minutes of faff. Set piece, five minutes of faff. Set piece, five minutes of, you know, that standard um, uh, kind of fare. But, you know, the first 30 minutes were really much more dialogue-based. Uh, and there was a lot of banter uh, between Michael Jai White and his robot companion, his android companion, not to use the R word as is common. The script is also... Written by Mark Atkins, so kudos on the screen. And that, and that, um, I'm jumping all over the place, but I don't care. Um, my freeform's thought, my whatever that term is, um, stream of consciousness. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> my the, my stream of consciousness kind of um, you know video review. How I should probably rephrase this from now on. Um, you know, Michael Jai White, I haven't seen him in a lot. I have seen him in the uh, Mortal Kombat, uh, the online web series that, that was here for, that was online for a while. Um, and so he really makes this film just incredibly watchable and incredibly a lot of fun. He has a lot of uh, leading man charisma. This guy carries the entire, carries the movie and uh, doesn't overpower everybody around him. Um, the... Performances over, overall are, are, I mean, Jai White is very, very good, um, playing the tough, no-nonsense cop, but who is also just, has a wonderful, sarcastic streak about him that I, abs I absolutely love characters who can be sarcastic, and while they can be overplayed to a point of where it's no longer funny, White keeps it uh, amusing at all times. Um, the actor playing the android, however plays and uh randy white um uh, yeah randy white you, you know playing ro playing robots i had never having not seen him in anything else i really cannot comment on his other performances but here he does the very stilted oh i am i am not aware of your logistics you know this is a uh investigation he's the very dry very factual kind of delivery you get in almost every robotic character to to the point where it he just he seems a little dull by it because you have Jawa who's being very charismatic very out and open and then you have him not being anything like that and while it does provide a contrast it and it does well 
you know, I, I would scratch that. The performance does provide good conscience and it does blend well with that was my dog. She's smelling around. She wants to get out of the room, but I'm recording this. Uh, she has to wait. Uh, so it does provide country, and it does give Jai White a good balance for to be the usual sarcastic dick um, that you get. He almost, it, I guess, close way I can perform it, I can uh, relate it to is Will Smith and I Robot. Um, that kind of sarcasm, uh, dislike of machines, uh, though. His is a bit more of a different dislike than Will Smith's. Um, in terms of the actors, um, my biggest disappointment, even bigger than Debbie Gibson showing up for five minutes um, in Mega Shark vs. Mega Shark, uh, Charles S. Dutton, who is just a fantastic actor, um, is in this film for two scenes. Quite literally, two scenes. Uh, right probably somewhere in the middle of the second act and right at the end of the film. That's all you see of him. And I was, you know, probably, uh, so I can, I can understand it's a low budget film, you know, tight schedule. So, but I was a little disappointed by that. However, um, for his, fi for the final scene, for the second to last scene of the film when he's, when he is there, uh, it is good they have a top notch actor for that, for that sequence. Otherwise, it, might not come off as good as it was, but um, you know. So, mm, uh, CGI. You know, this is Asylum has been on a really good upswing with CGI as of late. The CGI looks uh, fantastic, uh, really polished, really, really nice and clean. Um, and I'm I'm fully accepting of CGI and low budget films. Um, the times of doing stop motion animation and having, you know, practical things on set for, for low, low budget pictures has changed so drastically, it's, I think it's probably no longer va um, viable to do it like that. So, you know, CG's here to stay and I'm, I'm cool with it. Um, so, what? What? One second. Sorry. This, yeah. Cool. You'll be up here till I'm finished. Um, so Android Cop. Yeah, I know it's not the most in-depth of things, but, you know, whatever. I had a lot of fun with it. I enjoyed it. Um, is it something I'm going to remember as, like, oh, this is a great action classic? No. It is low-budget B-movie, unapologetic B-movie, and a very enjoyable, well-made B-film. And I absolutely enjoyed it for that. I, I was entertained. The film is 90, just short of 90 minutes. Like, it's like 88, 89 minutes. And it breezed by. And it breezed by really quickly. Which was a bit surprising me when I looked at the uh, my Blu-ray uh, counter. And I realized, oh my god, 45 minutes have already passed. Uh, that's it, To me, that's a really good sign of a low-budget film. That, you know, it does keep pace. It does have a flow where you're, you just forget about watching the film because in the movie theater you're sitting down you unless you have a watch or you're one of those jerks who's going to whip out their cell phone and check the time um you know a plague upon all of you guys who do that you you, you really don't know exactly how long the film is you don't know exactly how how long you've been sitting there at home you can look at your blu-ray player you can look at your dvd player and see how long you've been watching the film for so it makes a runtime that much more evident for me so, you know, I would, uh, would I say check it out? Yeah, I would say check it out. If, if you're a fan of science fiction, like I am, if you're a fan of low-budget action films, yeah, check it out. Definitely, it's it's one of the better ones I've seen. It's one of the most enjoyable I, I've seen. Uh, it's it. Did, I was talking to a co-worker, and he was a little confused when I told him about it. He said, oh, I love that movie, Cyborg Cop. He's like, wait, is it... I'm thinking about Cyborg Cop. I'm thinking of something else. So, like, yeah, you know, you're thinking of a different film. But, so your Android Cop. I really loved it. You know, it delivered exactly what it should. It delivered an Android, delivered an Android who's a cop, and delivered action. It succeeded on those levels. Um, relation to Robocop, Android Cop. That's literally about, and some corrupt officials. That's about as different, as about as close as you can get to Robocop. 
And for me, that's always when the Asylum blockbusters work the best. It's when they really just take one or two strands to link it to the original film rather than saying, right, we're going to cop, we're going to try to copy it uh, verbatim. So, yeah, I, w I would say watch Android Cop and enjoy it, hopefully. Hope you'll, hopefully you'll enjoy it and understand for what it is. Me, I enjoyed it. I like it. Um, and so hopefully I'll be able to watch Robocop and not freeze to death before before I get to watch it and maybe I'll do a full comparison between um, Android Cop and the Robocop remake and maybe a little bit, you know, it's not even, you know, I'm not even going to talk about Paul Verhoeven's movie. It really is pointless. Um, that's a classic. There's no reason to compare it to the, to the remake. Cheat the remake as its own film. So, um, hopefully I'll do a block for mock next week. I haven't done those in forever and I kind of enjoyed it. So, yeah, my recommendation, check out Android Cop. It's fun 90 minutes. I don't think you'll necessarily feel like you wasted your time. You'll have fun with it. All right, bye-bye.